tonight. Five of them line up for the final of the When You Wish Upon a Star. Here they come. Gap slightly. That's three little poppy. Away they go. They're off in pacing. And leaving out for the early positioning, the positioning that's likely going to get them into the pocket behind it can't see me would have to be the thinking, and that's McNair with Spoiled Beauty. He's got Spoiled Beauty off to the best start of her career into the opening turn, as she'll lead it over Oju Hanover, who pocket sits for now. There's Can't See Me, the heavy favorite. McClure lays off the early hustle in third. Then it is Charlotte Station next to last, and Little Poppy, after being gapped slightly at the start, she trails from fifth, 27 to two is the opening quarter. Now they're going to ride a bit of a breeze into the back stretch here, and it's spoiled beauty at 22 to one, leading at a length. Oju Hanover in second, but she looks to the outside and she looks to move forward to the lead here. Spoiled beauty and Oju Hanover go beyond three eighths, and it looks like Oju Hanover is going to be able to clear. Spoiled beauty as McNair grabs her handholds will now ride the deuce. Can't see me. She's unhurried and she continues to just track from third. Charlotte Station tightening up now and fourth. The fifth one is Little Poppy. Single file to that half and 55 and one as they make their way around this big final turn. Up to the five eights they go. Oju Hanover on top. Cutting it out right now. She leads a length and a half. Spoiled Beauty in second. Still with a strong hold to McNair and now McClure gives his cue to his filly. Can't see me. is on the move and here she comes. She's up to second and a length away from Oju Hanover. They head to three quarters in one twenty three and four. They're moving. Oju Hanover on top. She turns for home. She'll try to out-sprint them. Can't see me on the outside. She's got about three to make up right now on Oju Hanover. In the pocket is Spoiled Beauty, Charlotte Station, and Little Poppy. It's still Oju Hanover. Can't see me. Starts to gain some ground now, but Oju Hanover still got two lengths, and the line's coming. It's Oju Hanover. She'll hold on for the When You Wish Upon a Star score. It's Oju Hanover over Can't See Me in a mile time of 153. Brentham can't see me on the outside. She's got about three to make up right now on Oju Hanover. In the pocket is Spoiled Beauty, Charlotte Station, and Little Poppy. It's still Oju Hanover. Can't see me. Starts to gain some ground now, but Oju Hanover still got two lengths, and the line's coming. It's Oju Hanover. She'll hold on for the When You Wish Upon a Star score. It's Oju Hanover over Can't See Me in a mile time of 153. Two winner capturing the When You Wish Upon a Star final is number two, Oju Hanover. A two-year-old Bay Philly by Stay Hungry from the Western Hanover Dam, always true. Bred by Hanover Shoe Farms, owned by Casey Coleman, Domain Haven Farm LLC, Mac Nickel and Kevin McKinley, Tony Beaton. Back-to-back -back When You Wish Upon a Star titles for Tony. James McDonald, the winning driver. Oju Hanover with her second career score and four lifetime starts. 153 here tonight. Biggest purse earning of her young career for Oju Hanover, who's congratulated trackside with a cooler presentation made by... Oju Hanover captures the When You Wish Upon a Star final. I'm here with winning driver James McDonald. Uh, James, you made an aggressive move uh, at the back uh, at the backside there. Uh, just talk about your decision and what you thought and how she felt out there. Um, yeah, I'd kind of trip mine out, uh, all the limbs, and then she always has pace finishing, but Bob's horse has just been so dominant. Uh, Honestly, I was hoping I could zip back to the lead and maybe follow him again and just try and try and be second because she, like I said, she'd been so good. But uh, you know, it worked out. My, mine's been a been a good filly every limb, every race so far. She's been she's been knocking on the door and uh, it's good. It, she got stung a little bit going to the half, but in the last turn, she was still um, on the bit pretty good and feeling great. So. Uh, down the lane, I was hoping she'd have enough. I, I figured Bob would probably uh, come with a big brush, but uh, luckily my my filly brought her A game today. You got a chance to qualify this filly. You didn't race her on debut, but uh, you were able to notch a win with her this evening. Just how did you feel uh, in both those qualifiers? What were your expectations of this filly uh, going to this year? Yeah, you know, uh, Tony and his crew and, and Casey and all them, they, they always really liked her. She always had high-end speed. So, uh, you know, the, the last few years, the ones they've told me they liked, they've been pretty spot on. So uh, it always gives you a good boat of confidence going in when, the, when they like them. So uh, uh, she felt great both qualifiers. She was uh, pacing really hard through the wire. And, and uh, I think the one I pulled the plugs after the wire and she was just like launched. So uh, 
Uh, JD did a great job with her first start, and she flew home and won, and, and uh, it's just great to see her back in the winner's circle again tonight. Now you touched on how you were expecting Bobby maybe to remove and uh, hoping that you could follow that helmet to Chase, but you had to do it on the engine. Uh, did she feel? Uh, how did she feel out there on the lead versus uh, chasing uh, in starts prior? Uh, she feels amazing uh, anyway. She rides on the bid perfect. Uh, she, she's just a Cadillac to drive. Like I said, when, when the half come up in 55, I, I thought maybe I'd cost myself second, but uh, uh, Tony and his crew had her great, and she, she uh, hung in tough and battled and, and was able to get the win, so a really, really good effort by her. Congratulations. Best of luck the rest of the night, James. Thanks, Johnny. All right, there's Oju Hanover who captures the When You Wish Upon a Star final for winning trainer Tony Beaton.